So the upcoming Shabbos we read Parshas Pinchas. And let us share a short word on the Parsha that you could share with your families. Pinchas ben Eloza ben Aaron ha-Koyen heishev eschamosu mi'al ben Yisrael bekana eskenose besoichom v'loicholisi es ben Yisrael bekinosi. And this act was of such momentous significance that in every generation we dive into HaKadosh Baruch Hu and we want to be Mo'ir HaRacham Yishamayim Rachmono Id Karlan Kena Osei De Pinchas Kano'o Bedil V'Yavoyo We want to invoke Masa Pinchas to be Mo'ir HaRacham Yishamayim What was so great about Kinas Pinchas? Pinchas' intentions were just to be ma'orer rachamei shamayim. Fascinating tshuva in Igris Moshe. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein writes a tshuva to his son-in-law, Rabbi Elia Moshe Shizgal, who was a godel be Yisrael, and he died at a very young age before his father-in-law. And Rabbi Eli Moshe Shizkel asked the Moshe, Rashi writes in San Edom Peyalaf or Medbeis, Aboy Laramis Kano and Poygem Boy, Bnei Odom Hakshedem Hamitkanim Bikin Ata Makom. Does Rashi mean to say that at everyone is entitled to kill Aboy Laramis? You need to be yourself on a very high level of virtue, of tzidkus. You need to be a Ben Odom Kosher. And your intentions need to be pure. Only lekane kinas Hashem to be mekad Hashem shomayim to prevent the chilel Hashem. But if you have any personal agenda, any personal vendetta, then you don't have permission to do this. And Rav Moshe agrees, and he says, very much so. Chidush Aran, in the Hemshech of the Sugi, the Gemara says that Pinchas approached Moshe when he saw this. Awful thing happening. He ran to Moshe. Moshe, didn't you teach us a boy la ramas kanu a poigim boy? So pshutoi shel dovor. Moshe just wanted to be sure that that he remembers correctly. But the chedush sheran says no. Pinchas went to Moshe and asked, "Am I fitting to do this? Haim ani raui lakach?" And Moshe says, "Ein odam raui mimcho." Yes. I think that proves Reb Moshe's point. Not everyone could be a Kanai. You could be a Kanai only if your intentions are pure, if there is no anger and no wrath, and there's nothing personal about us. Kanoas needs to come from Rachamim, from Chemlo, from Tuv Leiv. Only Lekadesh Shem Shomayim. So in Brochus Davchof, there's a story. Rav Popa asks Sabaya, why our predecessors, our forefathers, had Nisim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu made miracles for them, and he doesn't make miracles for us. And Abai explains, Rishonim de Masar Nafshai wa Kedusha Sashem, Israch HaShlo Nisim. They had Mesirus Nefesh to me, Mekadoshim Shemaim, and they had miracles. We lack that Mesirus Nefesh. And Abai brings an example of a Godel that had Mesirus Nefesh, Ravada Barahava. Ravada Barahava walks out and he sees a woman that is dressed immodestly to the extreme. And Ravada Barahava tears that garment off her back. And people told Ravada Barahava, she isn't Jewish. She's a Gentile. What do you want from her? And he's disturbed. And he turns to the woman and he asks her, what's your name? And she says, Mosam. And Avada Barahava says, Mosan sounds like Mosaim, 200. Mosan, Mosan, Dalad Meyazuza Shavi. He takes up $400 and he gives her compensation. And when I learned this Gemara many years ago, I asked, Abai wants to bring an example of a person that has Mesirus Nefesh to make Mekadashem Shemaim. And it's a great example. Ravada Barahava, in the middle of the street, tears a garment and he's not afraid that people will mob him and lynch him. What are you, crazy? You're starting up with a woman in the middle of the street. They'll call the police. They'll take him to the station. He's going to be brought before a judge. He doesn't care because he needs to be moicha. al kedusha Hashem. But why is it important, the end of the story? 
she's not Jewish, what's your name? And I say, of course, it's important. Because we would like to know who is this Rav Adar Barahava. Is he an angry person or not? So maybe in the morning before he left his house, he yelled at his wife because his coffee wasn't exactly like she likes it. And then in Shul, he bet up the gabe because he didn't get shlishi. And then he walks out on the street and he tears a garment off a woman's back. If that would be the case, that is not a kanai for whom a Kodesh Bochu makes miracles. Who was Ravada Barahava? So he was told that the woman isn't Jewish. I'm embarrassed to say I know many people that would respond, she's not Jewish, Zazana Kapura. No, that's not Ravada Barahava. Obviously, she isn't a big tzedekis. Obviously, she, wouldn't, she shouldn't be wearing those clothes. But if she's not Jewish, then I hurt her feelings without any justification. She's not chayev mitzvahs. The Shulchan doesn't dictate to her how to dress. So he turns to that woman and he asks, what's your name? Al tar b'sicha misho. Be'ishto yom rokal v'choyme b'yeshe sacherem. Be'ishe sacherem b'bas Yisrael am rokal v'choyme b'nochriya. B'rishus ha-yochid am rokal v'choyme b'shus ha-rabim. And especially a woman that's not dressed modestly, the God Lado shouldn't be standing in the street and conversing with her. But Rav Adar Barahava says, I heard her feelings and it wasn't justified. So he asks her, what's your name? And she says, Mosam. Takes out $400 and he pays. He should have asked, where did you buy this dress? Let's go. I want to know how much you paid. And how long have you been wearing this dress? So it's a used dress. How much is a used dress worth? He doesn't ask any questions and he makes no inquiries. He just wants to make her happy. And he takes out $400 and he pays. That's Ravada Barahava. This is a person that is sensitive. Sensitive to the feelings of an immodest, non-Jewish woman. Yes, he cares. And when it comes to Kvot Shemayim, he is the Kanui. That is Mesiris Nefesh on Kedusha's Hashem. And those are the people that deserve miracles. That was Pinchas. Pinchas ben Eloza ben Aaron Akoyim. Rashi writes, and the sources in Sanedin and Daf Pei Beis. Lefi shoya shvutam evazam oisav yoyimrim. Hari yisem ben puti zeh shepitam avi imay agolam lavay dezora v'alach v'harag nisi sheveti yisorim. The shvutam said, well, his grandfather was an oivet of the Zorah. What's the big deal? And I wonder, what did those Shvotim say? That is nonsense. It's cruel. It's stupid. What does that have to do with him that his grandfather was Mephatam Agolim Lavoy the Zorah? Is that a reason that Torah Sashem Agdoisha needs to write a posuk? And I say, no. What they said is not stupid. Maybe it isn't even cruel. Maybe it makes sense. Their argument was a very simple one. It's in Pinchas genes. It's genetic. His grandfather was an Oyved of Oydesorim. And the Gemara says in Shabbos Kufei, HaMeshabe Kelem Bachamoso Yeh Beinecho Koyved of Oydesorim. Angry people are like Oyved of Oydesorim. The Zoya goes beyond that, and the Zoya says, So according to Chazal, there is some kind of a connection between Avodah and Kaas. So the Shvotim said, Yes, Pinchas is a Kanai, but his grandfather was an Oyved Avodah It's in his genes. It's hereditary. Avodah and Kaas come from the same place. So obviously Pinchas is one of those angry ones, and that is why he killed Zimri and Cosby. The Torah says, you've got a mistake, dear Shavotim. It is in Pinchas' genes, but you're confusing one grandfather with the other. You want to know what's in Pinchas' genes? Pinchas ben Aloza ben Aaron Akoyen, Oyev Sholem, Roidev Sholem, Oyev Esabrias Umekav and Torah. That's Pinchas. That is the real Pinchas. He is the grandson of Aaron Akoyen, nothing to do with the other Zayda. Pinchas 
is a man of peace, a man of warmth and of love, a man that is sensitive to everyone. Pinchas ben Eloza ben Aaron Akoyin. And he was the Kanai. Masro nafshayu al kedushas Hashem. That is Mesiris Nefesh, Lekadesh Shem Shemaim. And that is why we hope. In the schus of Kinas Pinchas, Shakodesh Bochi Yerachem Aleinu. And just like we daven every morning when we say Akedis Yitzchak, Kishem Shekovesh Avrom Avinu Esrach Mavlas Esritzoyin Chobalei Vev Shalom, Kein Yichbishu Rachmech Oskas Chomei Oleinu. We could say the same regarding Pinchas. Kishem Shekovesh Pinchas Esrach Amov. Have a beautiful Shabbos.